church is in the tomb. I'm, I'm not understanding. He said, people are dying. Young people are dying day in, day out. But the church is just doing church as usual. Yeah. And we have become so comfortable with just coming to this place of worship Sunday after Sunday, weekday after weekday, and there is no different. There is no rule of God. We're just going through the motions. And I said, and, and when I came and I said, God, I feel your presence, but I don't understand why the people are not getting in worship. Why is it such a struggle for people to hear you, to praise you, to give you glory, to give you honor? And God said, because they're in a tomb. And when you're in a tomb, you're in an isolated situation. And you're all by yourself. So God says, there's nothing around you but mice and maggots. And the very mice and maggots that are surrounding you are trying to eat away at your spirit. And because we are so comfortable and so used to being in this tomb, we don't even realize the rodents that surround us. That's why you can't give God praise. That's why you can't give God worship because you're stuck in a tomb. So I said, God, I really need to hear you. What are you saying? So he reminded me of a scripture in 2 Kings. 2 Kings, the 13th chapter. 20 in the 21st verse. And it says, then Elijah died and they buried him. I'm reading from the message translation. And it says, some time later, raiding bands of the Moabites, as they often did, invaded the country. One day, some men were burying a man and spotted raiders. They threw the man into Elijah's tomb and got away. But when the body touched Elijah's bones, the man came alive and stood up. And walk out of the tomb on his own two feet. You're in a tomb. The church, the body of Christ is in a tomb. And God said, the reason we don't see anything different, we have not seen miracles, we have not seen deliverance, we, we can't even cast out devils anymore because we're in the tomb. And there are people from the streets and out in the world coming into the tomb where we are. <laughs> and they're touching us. Mm. But when they leave, they leave dead. They don't leave alive. God is saying now is the season for you to tap into the anointing that I invested in you. Elijah was an anointed man of God. And even though he was dead, when the body that they put in the tomb with him touched his bones, When the body they put in the tomb touched his bones, the man was alive. And he stood on his own two feet and walked out of the grave. If we are going to see a move of God, we must tap into the anointing that God has invested in us. The church is in a trance right now. Our youth, our young people were stuck in a trance because like the Beyonce song, we're drunk in love. Because we don't even realize that that now now these ladies they come they come to the church and they listen to Beyonce. They that stuff imparts in their spirit and they come to church stuck. And a lot of times it's not even because of what they heard Beyonce said. It's because there is a transferring of spirits that's in the church 
that we have refused to discern and cast out. Because people come to church after drinking Syrah, after drinking Hennessy, after getting high, after clubbing, and they get up in the church and operate as if they have not done what they just did. And when they come into the house of God and they touch these microphones, there are a transferring of spirits that goes out of their mouth into every spirit, every receptive person that enters into the gates of the house. So that's why we say enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his cross for prayer. We got the wrong people talking and spitting out God's word. And it's an oxymoron because they don't even live the life that they're speaking. So God says, even though they're saying my word, because they're not living my word, I let demons transfer out of them into God's people. And the church misses it. You know why we miss it? Because we don't want to fire musicians. We don't want to get rid of worship leaders. Because we feel like we're going to lose the whole church. I come to the understanding that if you do not worship God in spirit and in truth, I'd rather not hear you say anything at all than to hear you talk about God and not live it. Demons are real. And we come to church and we sugarcoat everything. We sugarcoat the word of God. We, we want to make people feel good. We want to make people jump. We want to make them holler and scream and, and, and have an emotional time in church. But there is no power. There is no move of God at all because we missed it. Why is it that we will sugarcoat the word of God when the world does not sugarcoat AIDS? Why will we sugarcoat homosexuality when the world does not sugarcoat STDs? Why do we watch people Know they're in sin. Sleep with six different people in the church. But don't sit them down until one of the people get pregnant. Why do we wait for the result of a person being pregnant? Then we want to sit musicians down. Then we want to sit choir members down. Then we want to sit people down. It's because we missed it when God showed it to us. Or is it that we're more concerned about the image of the church rather than how God sees us? When are we going to get it? Understand that even though you're in the tomb, you are still anointed. You may not always hear God. You may not always see God. You're not going to always feel like God is with you. But you're still anointed. Help yourself. Get back to God. Get back to where God wants you to be. I remember the days when we used to be scared to walk up in the church after a long night of sin. Because there used to be people in the church that could smell sin. And it used to scare me because I'm trying to figure out how in the world can you smell sin? smell somebody being drunk all night long and then coming up to the church to pray coming to sing coming to usher 
but you smell sin. What happened to that discernment in the house of God? Oh, no, no, no. Jesus. Did we let that discernment die with Elijah? Jesus, Did we let that anointing die with our forefathers? What happened? I don't know about nobody else, but I don't want to do church as usual. I don't like just coming to church and there's no move. I want to feel the glory. I want to see deliverance. I want to see miracles. I want to see healing. I want to see God's power. I want to leave change. Yes, 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 yes. It's not even, it's not even necessarily about anybody else that comes. But when I go to church, I say, God, I want you to do something different in me. Because I know I'm not perfect. I know I made some mistakes. So God, whatever I don't see, show me when I get to the house of God. Clean me up. Change me so that I can leave better than the way I came. But we don't pray that prayer. We just come. And we sing because we feel like it's our duty. We play the instruments because we feel like it's our duty. Soon as somebody say, let's have prayer service, oh no, I won't make it to that one. Come on, come on, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We will find something to do. Other than sit in the face of God. Jesus. But when we get in trouble, we run to the face of God. And God is like this. Where were you when I was calling you? You're talking to me. But I don't really know you. Because you are far from me. When you decide to come back for real this time, not because you messed up, not because you got caught, but for real this time. Thank you, Lord. I know some of y'all remember the Rihanna song. It says, don't tell me you're sorry because you're not. Because I only know you're only sorry you got caught. But you put on quite a show. Y'all don't, don't know that. Really had me going. Now it's time to go. And God said the curtain's finally closing. And we're still there begging. Saying, God, hear me. Please forgive me. Only because you're in trouble. <laughs> I had went to school with people, high school with them, and grew up with them. They either get shot or they kill themselves. Jesus. And sometimes I was caught up in the same stuff. Can I be real with you? Because uh, what happens is uh, the reason we're, we're losing our youth is because we're not really being real. Sometimes we make our youth feel like we're immortal and we don't know how they feel. And we don't know what they're going through and so they don't want to talk to us. But I remember there was a time I was out there in the streets and now you call them trap stars. When I was out there, it was just called hustling. And I remember just being in the streets, doing what I was doing, still coming to the house of God, playing the keys, but still doing what I was doing in the streets. I was bold and crazy. Let me tell you how bold I was. I would get on the keyboard and I would play. You can keep playing. I would get on the keyboard and I would play. My phone would ring. 
I will go to the back door of the church and make a delivery. Go back in the church and get on the keyboard like I never did anything. Now what if God would have taken me out at the very moment when I was in my sin and I still watch people that I was with die So later I think about God, why didn't you take me? And he said, because I need this to be your story. And if I take you now, you won't tell it. If I take you now, nobody else won't hear you. And, and what's crazy is because the church we tell people when they come out of sin just don't do it but you can't just say don't do it you can't tell a person that sells drugs and makes ten thousand dollars a week just stop selling drugs because they're gonna look at you and say what's next if you tell me to stop what plan do you have for me from this day on but the church is not in a position to do anything. So the hustler, the trap star said, well, I'm going to go out and keep doing what I'm doing because this is my means of getting money. I can't get a job because I already went to jail, already got a record, so nobody won't hire me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. We got to tap into the anointing Amen. because the anointing makes provision for you to take care of the needs of the people that come into your house. And if people are coming into your house for a need, that means there's a need in the house. It's already there. You just got to do it. And yes, y'all know my story. And I'm not telling you to tell your story. But I promise you, if you knew all the dirt about the person sitting next to you, you probably would move your seat. That's why I thank God for his grace and his mercy. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every day, I thank him for his grace and his mercy because he could have killed me in my sin. I charge you tonight. Tap into the anointing of God. Even though you may be in the tomb, Help somebody else not stay there. Help somebody else get out. Hear ye the word of the Lord. So shall you prosper. I pray this word that God has given me has blessed you. I pray that it change your life and help you be a better you. Sometimes it's tough to relate to some of the things that the youth go through and the younger people go through, but we have to know how to come to their level, understand their language, and help them be better. That's what this is all about, because you ain't always been where you at. I know that wasn't correct English, but you ain't always been where you at. You haven't always been saved. You messed up. You got drunk. You got high. You fornicated. One thing I come to appreciate is knowing that a child is interested in the opposite sex. 
Because there's a spirit of homosexuality that is going crazy in the world. And I'm not saying just because you like the opposite sex, you need to be perverted and do things outside of the will of God. That's not what I'm saying. But I appreciate the fact that you are interested in the opposite sex because if the devil had his way, your story will be like everybody else. Promoting gay marriage. What is this world coming to? It disgusts me. And I'm a homophobe. I'm going to just tell you the God's honest truth. I am. It's not that I don't love you. I hate what homos do. I hate it. I'm not wrong for hating it. Because if God hates it, I hate it. It is what it is. Let's get it together. Let's get it right with God. Let's be what God called us to be. And if we gonna say yes, let our yes be real. Let our yes be sincere. And let our yes come from our heart. I thank God for your listening ears. And this is the word that God has given me. Be blessed. Be encouraged. And know that even though you are where you are, you are still anointed. God bless you.